All right, I want to talk about something that I think is kind of important, and it's kind of driven by these comments. This is from the Right Network, which says, he says nice things, and he says, my question is, once it overheats from recording, would I be able to switch the, to pictures and get some shots? Or would the camera just shut off completely? He's talking about the R8, and the reason he's asking that is because the R5, this camera, used to do that you would be uh recording actually what i remember what i remember happening is photographers would be shooting pictures and then switch over to recording and they couldn't record at least in 4k or the higher frame rates because the camera was overheating so that's probably what's driving his question here and what i told him was that i i doubted it like i really i doubted it was going to be a problem because um after doing my testing and determining that the R8 was definitely overheating from heat. Um, I, I don't think this is like a program thing. But then Darren per Darren Perry comes along and basically just says, "Yep, it did it to him." So it was a specific incident incident when he was recording in H drive mode. But yeah, it, it's not it's not just a video problem according to Darren so that reminded me of this comment the other day and I didn't know if I was gonna if I was gonna talk about this or just let it go but now I think I think I'm going to because there's this is important and Canon needs to hear this because I think this sentiment is reflected in a lot of Canon users. So this is from Halston and what he said was, yeah, I returned this camera again. He's talking, he's talking about the R8 because of the tiny, hilariously bad battery. The battery life is awful. It shows a full 50% and dies very quickly, just like you were talking about. Not to mention the SD slot is in the battery compartment, which just causes even more hassle. If you lose some kind of, or if you use some kind of third party grip, which I wouldn't, or some other jerry-rigged option. I wasn't even using it for video, just stills, and I was blown away by how fast it died. I was willing to deal with no IBIS one card slot, etc., because the sensor and autofocus are actually incredible at $1,500. The design choices, otherwise, especially battery SD card location, are just silly. People are out here defending it like they have a personal stake or work for Canon. No, it's bad. If you're willing to deal with it, that's fine, but, I, but it hasn't been talked about enough, and there are too many people saying it's not that bad. Okay. I agree with them. I totally agree with them. That's, that's the reason why I'm covering this stuff on this channel. It's a baby channel. Nobody's seeing it. But it it helps me to process this and get some of this frustration out. It helps me to hear somebody else express it. But here's the question. Canon, what are you doing? I mean, why why would you leave your customers... Why would you make such a great camera and then leave your customers feeling like this, frustrated. These are fans, you know? And it got me thinking about, about the Canon Cripple Hammer. And if you're not familiar with that expression, it's an expression that was coined, I believe, by Casey at Canon Conspiracies. If, if it was someone else, I, I apologize, but he, I think he came up with that one. And, and the idea is that Canon makes cameras, they make these cameras, and they make really good cameras, but then they pull out something. It's like almost like a Persian flaw where it's a designed limitation. And I, I personally have a huge history with this and it's extremely frustrating. I talk to my buddy, Peter Gregg about this all the time. It's kind of a joke, like, like, and, and it's the way it's handled that's frustrating because when they announce these cameras, they, they talk about how great they are and then and then Peter and I always joke, okay, what's what's the catch? What's the catch? Because we know it's coming. There's going to be something. And it's just a horrible way to do your customers. And and again, before I even get started, this is, this is not just Canon. I mean, I could tell you stories about Sony. Sony's used to overheat. They took a really, really long time to... <laughs> to, to catch on to the idea of a screen that just flips around for you. That was like really hard for them to take that um and run with it and then they they just now got to the point where their screens are touch screens that work for the menus as well as auto focusing so um you know so and now sony's doing weird stuff with how they're releasing cheaper bodies with the flagship guts and then not giving new like 
like Sony's ZVE one. It's it's basically an A7S three in a smaller, cheaper body, but it has more features that they're not putting in the flag in the flagship cameras. They're not you know, so they all play these games. Panasonic, their issues with autofocus is legendary, you know, I mean I won't get into it, but not putting dual pixel autofocus, good autofocus in the G uh, G seven X no G Panasonic GH6. Sorry, so many letters. And we could talk, uh, that's a whole other topic, but we could talk about how terrible these names are because they're so hard to keep straight. But um, yeah, the GH6 to have their terrible autofocusing system and then turn around and put the best autofocusing system they've ever made in a entry level full frame camera. If I was a micro four thirds investee, I would not be happy with that. You know, I, there's. I know a lot of they say a lot of people don't need autofocus, but a lot of people do. And if you don't need it, you can just turn it off. They should have put that in the GH6. All these cameras play these games, but the thing about Canon is it always feels arbitrary and and unnecessary, and it's often fixable in software. So I'll give you my history. I'm going to do a little rant, explain my my per, my my history with the Canon Cripple Hammer and and just tell you why Canon owners feel this way. Cause it's, it's incredibly frustrating, honestly. So I, I haven't been around forever. I mean, I, I came into this hobby in about 2015. So, and, and I know photographers will tell you that Canon was doing silly stuff like this even before the digital revolution, but I can only go back as far as I can go back. And so near as I can tell, it started with video, especially in the YouTube space with the 5D Mark IV. II. 5D Mark II had excellent, excellent, and I don't have a 5D Mark II, but we'll, we'll play pretend, um, had re really good video quality in a, what is a stills camera that's designed mostly with wedding photographers in mind, people who shoot portraits, came out, made beautiful video, and people fell in love with it. They started buying it. And they started using it, and there were there were workarounds that needed to be done to make it, you know, a complete video camera. But people were willing to do it because it had a beautiful image and a full frame camera. And Canon, for whatever reason, at that point on, decided that they didn't want that anymore, and they they started playing games. And that's that's where I came into it. That's 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 where I came into this space. It was about the time the 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV came out, and one of my again Peter Gregg, one of my friends, was talking about how how uh, uh, crippled the 4K was on the 5D Mark IV. It was huge, huge crop factor, enormous file sizes. And the crop factor, what basically what that means is whenever you switched it into 4K, your lens would zoom in to the point where you would need to put a different lens on in order to shoot video, which sounds like not that big a deal for a full-time YouTuber, but for the people this that camera was designed for, it made it unusable because again, Wedding photographers, they're, I mean, they're hustling the whole time. They, they have to change lenses to shoot shots sometimes, but they don't want to like, if you're, if you're, if you have a 5D Mark IV, I imagine I'm not a wedding photographer. You want a camera where you can flip a switch and catch a clip if you're going to do that and then flip right back. You don't want to have to flip a switch, take off a lens, get your, get your <laughs> 10 second shot and then uh, flip back over, take your lens off and then go back to shooting, shooting your photograph. So, um, that was a big deal. That was a big, like, like, what are you up to? What are you doing? What are you guys doing, Canon? Like, why are you making it harder on me to do my job? And what became obvious is around this same time, Canon started promoting their cinema camera line. And it felt like they were designing limitations into the 5D line. Again, this isn't the 5D. This is the R5, but it's the spiritual successor so that people would go ahead and buy the C100 Mark II, C100 Mark, uh, you know, C, C, whatever, all the, all the C cameras, you know? Um, and so again, that's where I came into the space. And I started out, I started out with two cameras that were very, very popular on YouTube. One of them was by accident. We just happened to have the 70D or 80D, one of them as our, as like our family, our family camera. And, um, it, this is the 90D. This is the one I ended up with, um, and it was it, it it ended up being a the perfect 
start YouTube with camera. <laughs> so that's exactly what I did and quickly found that a lot of people were using the uh, Canon uh, G7X Mark II as well. This is not the G7X Mark II. This is a more photography focused G5X, but it's it's almost identical to to the current version of the G7X Mark II. Again, I hate all these names, except it doesn't have a mic jack and has a little bit better lens. I use this for photography whenever I do want to play around with photography, even though it's not really my thing. It's nice to have a nice camera that will fit in your pocket. But So I had the, G, the Canon ADD and the G7X Mark II, and that's how, that's how my YouTube life went for years. And I love both those cameras. They were very very useful cameras. Both of them, I realize in retrospect, were limited. Um, they were probably crippled when they came out, but because I was new, I didn't care um, because they did what I needed it to do. But when the when the successors came out, which is literally this camera and um, almost this one, this one came out at the same time as the Mark III, um, I was super excited. So the 90D comes out. Again, this is it. And it hits... It hits the market with, with you know, all this excitement because, again, the ADD was one of the most popular YouTube cameras, and I was a YouTuber. I still am. Um, and it was like a lead balloon. <laughs> like, they, for whatever their reasons, decided that this camera doesn't need 24 frames per second, which is insane. And they didn't even give a reason why. 24 frames per second is what is what a lot of YouTubers use and a lot of YouTubers who tell YouTubers how to do YouTube tell you to use. Like, like it was just, it was the perfect thing to pull out of this camera to kill it for YouTube. Really, really strange, really strange. Even though I've never used 24 frames per second, a lot of people do. And I can, I can, there are a lot of things the 90D should have had in it. It should have had in-body image stabilization probably. I can name a few other things, um, but I can live with not adding things, but I do not like taking things away arbitrarily without an explanation. Well, the explanation is obvious. They're trying to push people over to their mirrorless cameras is what it seems like. They eventually, because people complain so much, added it back, but I don't give them credit for putting back what should have been there in the first place. You know, and on top of that, quietly, things that other people didn't notice, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say this, um, Despite these limitations, this is probably my all-time favorite camera. Like, I really, really love this camera. I've, I've got more models with this camera than any other camera. I'm using one here. Um, that's what we're recording this on. Um, I just found it reliable, robust. I, I, I like the image quality. For me, for me, it's fine, you know. Um, but it definitely came out strangely crippled. The cripple hammer hit it. It also has a 30 minute record limit for no reason. There's no tax reason anymore. They should have gotten rid of this a long time ago, but they didn't. And then it overheats in 4k crop mode. Well, they tell you that as soon as you put it in crop mode, it says it might overheat. So that makes it okay, right? No, it doesn't. It doesn't make it okay. And here's why it doesn't make it okay. Because this camera, I swear to you, is not overheating. This, the R5 got all the attention for fake overheating, but this one, I tested this multiple times. I would take it outside in the Texas heat in the summertime, 105 degrees, and I would hit record and it would overheat at a right about 30, 37 minutes. So it would go through one 30 minute cycle and then I'd click off, click on again, about 37, 38, 39 minutes, somewhere in there, it would overheat. I'd let it cool down completely, bring it back inside in my kitchen, in the air conditioning with no sunlight run the same test in almost the exact same amount of time. Not exactly, but almost the exact same amount of time it would overheat. So this was probably, this they, they probably, that whole overheating R5 thing, they've probably been playing that game for a while, but it did make it where this made me start looking at a cinnamon, a, a cinnamon camera. How many times am I gonna do that? Again, somebody should come out with a cinnamon camera because I mean, that would smell just amazing. Um, it did make me look at a C200 which came out about the same time um, because I wanted I wanted a camera that didn't overheat. Look, it worked. The system worked. Plus, it had 4K60. Now, it was it was hamstrung in its own way. Like, it had uh, no 10-bit uh, codec, which doesn't really bother me, but for pros that would buy a Cinnamon camera, I'm just going to roll with it, a Cinnamon camera, um, for them, I, having, a ten, having an 8-bit, codec and then it jumps straight to raw with no 10 bit in the middle 
you know, I'm not going to get too deep into this because I don't want to lose you, but like that, that was, that was a very, very severe Canon cripple hammer example. On top of that, for some reason, the C200, the autofocus would just go to sleep. Like it would just stop autofocusing. It was really strange, but um, yeah. Yeah. So I got rid of that because again, I was having problems with it. It wasn't worth the money. Um, 90D ultimately they fixed the 24 frames per second firmware. They never, they never fixed the 30 minute record limit and they never fixed the, uh, uh, what I was saying earlier about, uh, it overheating because, cause nobody complained. That's, I mean, that's the reason why I'm talking about this. Um, but it was like, that's odd. You know, that's strange. Well then the successor to the G7 X Mark II comes out. And again, this isn't the G7 X Mark II. This is a stand-in. It's the G5X, but it's almost the exact same camera. And again, this was an amazing, the, the Mark II is an amazing YouTube camera. And because it was more affordable, it was only like six, 700 bucks. You could probably get it on sale for 500. Still can for the Mark II. Um, and so when it comes out, the rumors start coming out that it's going to have a microphone jack. So in the side, it would have a microphone jack. You could plug in a microphone. That's the one thing that was missing because people like love this camera because it was so light. YouTubers were using it all the time. There were channels that had millions of subscribers built on the Mark II. So the idea of it having, having a microphone jack and 4K, it was going to have 4K in this tiny little camera. Okay. I mean, this is, we're going big time. And then it comes out. And the autofocus is terrible. Again, didn't see that coming. <laughs> Peter, Peter and I have talked about this quite a bit. They didn't see this coming. Like, how 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 do you get your most popular? Oh, and, and they took out the 24 frames per second. Like, so basically two of the most popular YouTube cameras was immediately useless for most YouTubers. Like, most people who consider themselves independent filmmakers, you just killed it, right? And so <laughs> the combination, but they didn't stop there with that. They, in addition to taking out 24 frames per second, in addition to terrible autofocus, which was so, so bad that ultimately they had to take and put the Mark II autofocus back into it um, because it was better than the Mark III. And of course the Mark II autofocus wasn't, wasn't all that good to begin with. So it's just, it's just a bad, bad video camera. And, um, and on top of that, yeah, it had that mic jack I was talking to you about, um, but it didn't have a place to put the mic. They didn't even attempt to find a spot. There's no, there's no hot shoe right here. And even if they did, the screen flips up, so it would have been blocked by that. So the ultimate YouTube camera became almost useless for YouTube. Why would why would they, why would they do that? And there are a few other issues, um, but I'll just I'll just move on because you know why would they do it? Well, they were trying to push people to their mirrorless stuff. And I'll give the Canon R, it came out about this time. I'll give the R and the RP a pass. I'm not totally sure they deserve a pass. It's Canon and they waited forever to, um, to come out with it. So they had a chance to get everything right. And then they, the Canon R was fine. Um, the 1080 or the uh, high frame rate, slow motion stuff was a little, 720 which is weird and there were other issues that um i don't know i don't want to spend a lot of time on the r because i didn't spend a lot of time with the r um but in the rp was a, that was just a hobbled camera in, in in general that was not good enough um but they were pushing a lot of people to the m series this is not m series this is the um this is actually the sony zv1 but it's kind of similar in size to the M series when it's in this cage, when it's in this cage, a very lightweight camera that shoots really good, uh, 1080p. Um, and the big thing about the, the M50, the M, this is what I'm talking about. The M50 had 4k. It was going to be the first Canon mirrorless camera with 4k, so much hype. And then it comes out <laughs> and the M50 4k, has a crop that basically, like, if you're filming yourself, it goes straight up into your nose. I mean, this is a great way to examine your tonsils um, if it could focus. But for some reason, this world-class autofocus that the Canon had been known for, right? And this, in, again, this isn't the M50, but if it had been, um, this world-class autofocus forgets how to autofocus whenever it's in 4K. So they got 
all the marketing say it's the first 4K camera. Um, everybody gets excited. Finally going to get Canon 4K camera. And, and it's terrible in 4K. So people just don't use it in 4K because it's too hard to use. You got to swap lenses to get a wider lens, which by the way, forces you to buy another wider lens. Um, and, and you're, you're just kind of like, all right, I'm just going to use 1080 because the 1080 looks good and I'll, I'll just go from there. So again, another, another crippled camera and that, you know, I could give you the other honorable mentions. You know, I mentioned the C200, um, the Canon M50, the and, oh, the M50 Mark II comes out, and it's the exact same camera. It doesn't fix any of the problems I just talked about. All of these cameras have a 30-minute record limit, except for the Cinema camera. Cinema, I said it right, not Cinnamon. Except for the Cinnamon camera, it had a. They all have a 30-minute record limit for mo, for no reason. You know, the M6 has a weird placement of the mic jack. I, I, it's it's crazy. The M5 actually did something uniquely stupid. Um, and I, I never owned this because it was so dumb. Instead of having instead of having the screen flip up like this, the M5 had it flip down, so it flips out the bottom. Like, how are you how are you supposed to how are you supposed to use that? Like, if you put it on a tripod, like if you have it on a selfie stick, you can't. I mean, why don't you just flip it out to the side? Like, and I know that there's photography concerns, and photographers like flip up screens sometimes or flip whatever this is called. I understand that because you can, you can do sneaky, stealthy stuff. I get it, but I'm, I'm a video guy. So I'm approaching this from the perspective of a video guy. And, and it's frustrating. Like that's what it boils down to is it's frustrating. So ultimately this one comes out. This is the Canon R5. This is the big dog. We've gone over this a couple times in the channel. It comes out and with all this fanfare it's gonna have 8k okay it's gonna have 8k and, and dual in, in body image stabilization and it's got two cool two card slots Woo so you can do dual recording well that all sounded good on paper except the ak overheated the 4k 60 overheated the slow motion overheats the dual card slots don't record dual cards at the same time so strange and and the ibis <laughs> makes this awful jello effect that makes it almost unusable for a handheld video now here's the thing okay um that's uh, well it's a wide angle lens and that's the problem with wide angle lenses or it's a small body without a fan and so they tend to overheat like you just have to be reasonable it's got dual card slots and you can't give me a good reason why it doesn't record in dual card slots there wasn't a good reason for any of that because after all of their more expensive like cinnamon cameras came out that next couple of years and got over their sales spike their initial like sales spike canon quietly started putting firmware updates out that fixed all those problems so it was a capable camera the whole time it was capable. But they, in software, created limitations that they, in software, went back and fixed. It's awful. It's, it, it really is frustrating. So the question is, why, why talk about it? Why am I, am I complaining? Yeah, I'm complaining. I'm not mad anymore. I know what to expect. Um, but I want more people to talk about. So when we get back to we get back to this this r8 that i don't know if there's anything we can do to change the battery life on it but i i don't think this camera is overheating oh and i i even forgot to mention this on the and this is the, this is the reason why i think this um with the g7x mark iii remember i told you it was, it was gonna have 4k well the 4k i knew i was forgetting something the 4k worked for about two to four minutes two to four minutes and then it would give you the overheating signal and once you finished your clip you were not going to be able to record another 4k clip so like basically this this video this camera came became useful for video um yeah i mean full stop it wasn't it did i say useful i meant useless useless for video um 
This is a good photography camera, but this is a better photography camera because this lens is a little better. This is a G5X. So, but the thing about it is after two to four minutes when it was recording that 4K and then telling you it was overheating, I promise you this camera was not too hot. Like I, you could, you could touch anywhere. You could pull the battery out of it. There was nothing hot on this camera. The, it was just, it was just an arbitrary limitation. I mean, they didn't go back and fix it. Right. So I can't prove it, but you know, I wouldn't surprise me. They could come out with a firmware update tomorrow to raise the threshold on this and make it, make it at least have to get a little hotter before it overheats. Cause I know it wasn't overheating. And that's, that's how I feel about this. Like I'm 100, 100% convinced that the R8 is overheating based on the fact that the temperature test that I did, I, I believe that there's something that's triggering it to say it's getting too hot. What I also believe is whatever that threshold is, is way, way, way too low. So if they could bump it up another 10 degrees, no one's going to get hurt by this. It's not even close to uncomfortably hot. It's, it's, it's barely warm when it says it's overheating. And I want, I want Canon to fix this. I want Canon to make it last longer without overheating. I want this to be a more useful camera. And I think the only way we can do this is by talking about Canon's history, exposing what they're doing with what they've been doing, which makes it difficult on their customers to want to love their cameras. Why have I bought all these cameras? I bought these cameras because over the years, I, I've just, I love what Canon does with their image. Their image is absolutely gorgeous and it makes people and food look better than it does in real life and that's what i need for my main channel it's a barbecue channel and lord knows i need to look better and i need my food to look better so i love canon in addition to them having some of the best lenses out now of course another cripple hammers canon won't let other companies make the rf glass which is frustrating because we could get a lot cheaper stuff from tamron or some of those other off-brand companies that make the or Sigma make great glass. It's just less expensive, but Canon, again, that's another thing we need to complain about. A lot of people complain about it. Big YouTubers, much bigger than me. Um, they haven't budged on that yet. I think I saw one, I saw one lens. It was like an 85 prime that somebody's making. Um, but we need to keep, we, as if we're going to be Canon users, it's in our best interest to keep our foot on well, I don't know if they have their foot on our throat or if we have our foot on their throat. We need to band together and keep talking about this crap because it is lovely gear. It makes love. It makes great images and it's fun to shoot with and it fits like a glove. But, um, yeah, this, this whole, this whole cripple hammer, that's, that's where that comes from. And again, this is just my experience. I, I didn't, I obviously, I don't know the whole story because nobody owns everything that Canon has ever made. But this is this is how it has affected me as a YouTuber and a guy who was just trying to just trying to make, you know, YouTube videos and kept running in to problems with my gear. I wish I wish there was a good option. Um, there's a lot of camera companies out there that seem to be trying harder to please their customers, but they're still coming up short, if that makes sense. Um, Canon seems to have the ability and the finances to make whatever they want and they seem to be designing these flaws i mean i can't prove it i can't prove it it's just my suspicion it's just my suspicion because again over and over and over again every camera that comes out has some secret some surprise surprise and finger quotes um and you just get the joy of finding it out so um yeah so those are my thoughts I hope you guys find this helpful. I'm coming up against a 30 minute record limit, so I'm gonna cut this short um, because that's that's how Canon works. <laughs> Subscribe if you enjoy this. If you have more questions, please keep them coming. Thank you, Haslin and, and, and the other, Has, Haslin, Heston, Halston. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. Thank you for this comment and uh, y'all keep them coming. All right, that's it.